Thank you very much and good morning. And um, I thought I start with a feel good slide for you. If you're not living in any of these cities here, you don't have that much violence to live with, but I can follow it up with a not so feel good slide. This is actually a statistic of murder rate increases during the pandemic from 2019 to 2020. It's basically going up everywhere in the United States. On that background, I will show you, of course, again, uh, injuries caused by violence. Just as a reminder, even in our place that's very much focused on uh, trauma, um, the majority of cases are related to MVCs and not to violence. So what's the role of radiology? We already talked about that yesterday. I will jump over it um, and show you again. This is how we scan the patient. A full body scan, which is a tear for the neck, abdomen, and pelvis, and then followed by a um, portal venous phase through abdomen and pelvis. We talked about this yesterday, so I can switch this. So why a whole body CTA for trauma patients? Here's an explanation. You would like to have an arterial contrast from the neck down to the pelvis, and it should be diagnostic in all body parts. And the reason for that is I will, I will explain, especially in the body and abdomen uh, area, it's very important to have more than one phase of contrast. And why dual energy? I talked about it, but just as a little uh, explanation, this is the same patient, same scan, out of a full body scan with not so great contrast. And as you can see on the left side, the vessels are barely detectable. And on the right side, you can actually um, use these, th this very much, uh, this scan after reconstructing 45 kV monochromatic images out of the original data set. And what, in this case, surprisingly or not, was a dissection here in the carotid artery that was easily identified on the lower energy um, scan and not so much uh, displayed in the original 120 kV scan. Good. Full body scans for simple reason and full body CTA for a simple reason. If you take a look at this patient, multiple gunshot wounds, multiple projectiles here in the right um, shoulder area, and there's also some injury on the rib down here, which is at the level, le level of the liver without a retained bullet fragment in this area. I'm Seth Kligerman. I'm the uh, division chief of cardio, cardiac and thoracic radiology at UCSD. Um, I have no relevant disclosures. And we're going to talk about not just acute uh, pulmonary thromboembolic disease, but more importantly, or not more importantly, but just as important, chronic thromboembolic disease. Uh, we're going to learn uh, about factors that lead to errors in diagnosis. Um, I know at other institutions, everyone is always correct when they diagnose PE and uh, or correct when they say there is no PE. But I know at my institutions I've been at, that's not always the case. We do make errors. Um, and things that we can look for to try to improve or decrease our rate of errors. Uh, and then again, recognize how acute PE is quite different than chronic thromboembolic disease and chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, which I'll call CTEF for the remainder of the talk. So acute pulmonary uh, disease. Now we know all know about VQ scan. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of VQ scan, but it does have some advantages and uh, that we'll talk about. Um, this is a patient with a lung transplant where you can see there's multiple larger segmental filling up, uh, lack of perfusion, perfusion defects, normal ventilation. Um, this is a high probability scan, which is not 100%, but it's 80%. These are, you know, the VQ scan, a lot of it is probabilities. Um, that means that, you know, a lot of times will be positive, sometimes will be negative. Uh, this patient had a CTPA one day later. Um, why they got that, I'm not sure. Uh, I think they weren't 100% convinced that the VQ scan was um, true. So uh, they went ahead and got a PE study where you can clearly see uh, intraluminal thromb uh, thrombi uh, filling the distal left and distal right uh, pulmonary arteries. So ventilation perfusion scanning, I mean, there are definitely advantages. Uh, you don't need contrast. So if there's issues with uh, contrast allergy, especially anaphylaxis or people with chronic renal failure, um, it's a big advantage. And also another big advantage is that, you know, precise, precise timing of the bolus, which is easier said than done, isn't uh, an issue. And then also patients don't have to hold their breath. Uh, there is less radiation dose uh, in most VQ scans, uh, but it requires a normal radiograph and it doesn't, the main limitations is it really doesn't give anatomic data. 
Um, and as we know with CT, there's a lot of additional information we get with CT. Studies take a lot longer to acquire. Most CTs take a few seconds. VQ scan, obviously, uh, much longer than that. Uh, CT is available at all times. And then the differentiation between acute and chronic disease is not always possible with a VQ scan. And then, of course, just like CT, there's some variability in interpretation. So here's a patient uh, with had a normal perfusion scan. I'm just showing the ventilation scan, showing multiple defects. Uh, and in fact, this is high probability. And then the patient underwent a few days later, underwent a CT scan. And you can see that the pulmonary arteries are look uh, pretty good. You know, why you know, this patient had a completely normal study. And the reason why this patient had a positive EQ scan was actually there was vascular compression due to uh, this perihilar fibrotic change and conglomerate lymphadenopathy in this patient with sarcoid. You can see some of the vessels are narrowed and pinched off. My next talk will be on pelvic pain in pregnancy, minor pain, or major trouble. So why does a patient undergo an MRI? When a pregnant patient presents with acute abdominal pain and the ultrasound is non-diagnostic, patient will often be referred for a non-contrast pelvic MRI. The reason being that there is no radiation, no harm to the fetus. We perform T2 weighted images in three planes. We get images with and without fat suppression, and we get at least one T1 weighted image, which helps us identify hemorrhage. We do not use contrast. There is a vast differential for abdominal pelvic pain in pregnancy. These can be obstetric, gastrointestinal, hepatobiliary, genitourinary, or gynecological in origin. And there also may be miscellaneous causes. And I'm going to review each category and show examples. When a patient is pregnant, uh, we need to be aware of the possibility of placental abruption. This is defined as in utero separation of the placenta from the myometrium. The placental abruption may be revealed versus concealed. It may be partial versus complete. We need to recognize that this can account for 10 to 25% of prenatal deaths, and it may be seen with hematomas. And this was a beautiful uh, demonstration from AJR showing the location where hematomas occur. So the most common one that we're familiar with is the subchorionic hematoma. This is often due to venous bleeding. If it's large, it's of concern, but small ones will often resolve on their own. Retroplacental hematomas are of great concern. These would be often due to arterial bleeding, and these are the abruptions that we're very concerned. And rarely, sometimes we can get a subamniotic hematoma, hematoma just uh, underneath the amnion, and it can actually, since we're not used to seeing it and it's rare, it can kind of look bizarre and almost like a placental mass protruding into the uterine cavity. But I just want to show um, e examples of hematoma on MRI. So this was a patient who presented, and this was actually performed to look at the uh, placenta. And we have a T2 weighted image and a T1 weighted image. Okay, so what do we see here? We see that there's a kind of T2 intermediate to bright region above the lower uterine segment. And T1 weighted image also shows that this is bright and the placental edge is lifted up a little bit. And this was a cervical hematoma at the uh, cervical os. This was a small placental abruption and patient actually did fine.